I'm really into war stuff. Let's talk about Burnham Frederick Russell, a key player in the British victory in South Africa. We don't know much about him, so I want to share his story with you today. He was born in 1861 on an Indian reservation in Minnesota. His mom hid him during a rebellion. He met his wife in school. After his dad died, he worked for Western Union and became a scout for the army. He also hunted buffalo, was a cowboy and a gold digger, and even became a deputy sheriff. He didn't finish school, but he survived many dangerous situations. He married Blanche in 1884 and they moved to California to grow oranges, but he went back to being a scout. In the 1890s, the American press said there were no more adventures in the Wild West, so Burnham went to Africa. He worked on building a railway and became famous. He survived an ambush and was called a national hero. He found artifacts from an ancient civilization and stopped a rebellion by killing the rebel leader. After that, his wife and younger son Bruce went back to California, and Burnham took his oldest son Roderick, who was 12, to Alaska to look for gold. He kept searching for gold in Alaska, and in January 1900 he got a message from Lord Roberts, the top guy in charge of the British troops in southern Africa. He made Burnham the head of intelligence at his headquarters. Burnham hopped on a boat to Cape Town and made it to Africa just in time for the Battle of Paidburg. Burnham was a real tough guy during World War II. He did all sorts of dangerous stuff like blowing up railways and bridges, and even got captured by the enemy twice but he always managed to escape. He was so good at his job that he was made a captain in the British Army, which was a huge deal for someone from another country. One time, he tried to warn some British soldiers about an ambush by the Boers, but they didn't listen to him and he got captured again. But he faked being wounded and managed to escape once more. He was a real hero. He was really into war stuff. Like, in 1900, he was trying to blow up a bridge but got surrounded by the enemy. His horse got killed and fell on him, but he managed to blow up the bridge and survive. Then he went to a hospital and got promoted to major. He even had dinner with Queen Victoria. Burnham and Baden-Powell became friends during the Matabele Uprising and fought together. They both believed in teaching kids about the military, and Burnham taught Baden-Powell a lot about surviving in the wild. Burnham was even called the father of scouting. After the scouting movement became popular, Burnham became an honorary scout and received a top award from the Boy Scouts of America. He and Baden-Powell stayed friends and talked a lot about scouting. Burnham's family also got involved in scouting. After getting better from his injury, Burnham led expeditions to Ghana and Upper Volta. Then he did research in the area of Lake Rudolph, now Lake Turkana, in Tanzania from 1902 to 1904. When he went back to America, he worked on an irrigation project on the Yaqui River in Mexico. He not only watered the land along the river, but also turned it into a beautiful horticultural area. He bought 3,600 square kilometers of land and managed it with his partner until 1930, when they sold it to the Mexican government. During World War I, Burnham was in California and was one of 18 recruiting officers who found volunteers to serve in France in 1917. He got really lucky in California in 1923 and found oil. In the first 10 years, his company made $10.2 million in dividends. He didn't hoard the money, but used it to do good things for the country. He funded a trip to Africa to bring rare animals to the US and helped start the Wildlife Defense League. He also started the American Committee for International Wildlife Protection, the Save the Sequoia League, and was on the California State Parks Commission. He was also president of the Southwest Museum in Los Angeles from 1938 to 1940. We're used to heroes in movies looking a certain way, all tall and muscular. But Burnham was short, only 5 feet 4 inches, and skinny but strong. People always noticed his cool grey-blue eyes. In his time, everyone smoked, but not him. He hardly drank either, worried it would mess with his sense of smell. He didn't sleep much and barely drank water so he could get used to it. And boy, did he train hard. He worked on pushing through tiredness, hunger, and thirst, and enduring pain. But in public, he was always polite and well-mannered, just like the people of his time. He was really into World War II stuff. His wife Blanche was always by his side on their travels, but two of their kids died young. The writer-writer Haggard even wrote three novels about their daughter Nada, who died during a war. 
He remarried at 83, but died a few years later. He even wrote two books and one was almost turned into a movie. There's also a movie and a prehistoric animal named after him.